We, we moved here in 97 and, and um, for the first 10 years we worked for the guy that owned the place and then like the last 10 years we've rented the place. So it, it worked out really well because I had 10 years to figure out what kind of worked and what didn't work before I took over the, the managing the land. We have a lot of variation in our land right here because we're so close to the Missouri River. It's only about three miles. We kind of got flats with pretty, pretty good soil. But once we get into the river breaks, the soil changes. I know them river breaks are so steep, wet year, dry year, it's kind of all the same. This flat land up on top will run twice as many cows as them steep river hills just a half mile away. So we figured out kind of how to use each different type of land. And some of that, that poor land, and it was you know, a long ways between water, so we moved it into dormant season grazing when cows didn't take as much water in the cooler part of the years. We got somewhere in the neighborhood of a total of 4,000 acres here. And what we, we concentrate our management during this June, July period, August, but we, we actually mob graze about 400 acres every year. That sounds like that's only 10% of the ranch, but by mob grazing during this, this time period, we're actually getting a benefit to the whole ranch by keeping the cows off of so many acres during the growing season. And then we also mob graze different 400 acres. We go back and forth every other year. So our plants get to rest one year and shoot a seed head, and then we, then we take them off, clear the ground the next year. So we're kind of on it every other year. We're trying to double our production over season long grazing. But we didn't double our cow herd, we doubled our days grazing. So, so you know, instead of going from 200 cows to 400 cows, we went 200 cows grazing 10 months out of the year instead of six months out of the year. When they're out grazing in the winter time and, and you're not burning any fuel and nothing's breaking down, it's definitely a big saving. What the experts will tell you, like on mob grazing, you either want to eat it or trample it to the ground. If you trample it to the ground, your microorganisms are recycling it Whereas if you leave it standing, it oxidizes and you're actually letting carbon back in the air instead of sequestering the carbon into the soil. So, I mean, that, that's part of the theory on the mob grazing. You either eat it or trample it, and then, it, then your nutrient cycle is, is efficiently working. We're aiming to protect our native species. And like, we didn't even know we had Maximilian sunflowers till we started resting pastures. Voila, there it was. You know, but when we first moved here and we had pastures and there cows in every pasture, we didn't even know some of these plants was on the place. I guess my goal was to produce more and improve natural resources at the same time. And I mean, you can do either one of them easily by overgrazing and producing more or undergrazing and improving. But with mob grazing, I could get more production and improve my natural resources at the same time. I'm not doing this for my grandkids, I'm doing it for me because it's rented land. You know, I have to make money in a short time period when you, when you implement a change on rented land. But, but I have to, it has to be profitable for me in a short time period where, where you're, when you're dealing with rented land. But, but uh, I guess I've been lucky in the, in the and that, that my landlord sees that I'm taking care of his land. I think that question was over my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>